Welcome back to Tinker and Create. We should be all done with the planning. You should have a plan diagram in front of you, all of the equipment and materials that you're going to need. And it's time for us to build our boats. Now I have drawn my pieces starting in a corner and working out. That's to minimize the amount of waste if I just did it in a big blob in the center or had them all over the place. Uh, I wouldn't have any other material to work with. Now make sure when you are cutting, whether you're using scissors or a knife, uh, please make sure that you're seated when you do this somewhere nice and secure um, and you know, ask an adult for help, particularly if you're gonna be using a knife. If you do have safety equipment like a glove, that's always a very good idea too. Um, even something like a leather gardening glove will offer your hand some kind of protection. If you do have a cut proof glove like this, that's obviously the best thing to wear. All right, that's the first bit. Only many more to go. All right, so I have the basic parts of my hull and deck ready to go. My ship was going to take this sort of shape. We've got a sort of lower deck there. We've got the hull branching out to the sides and then maybe a little bit wider. And then these bits are going to be uh, on top of the, the first bit of hull, just uh, bringing the edge of the ship up a little bit higher. I'm anticipating that once I fill it with cargo, it's going to sink into the water. So having a sort of higher uh, edge all around, it should be really good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is glue um, these parts of the, the hull together on either side. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm going to add the uh, top bits. And then I think I can go back to cutting out um, the shapes for the back and the front. Now, if you're gonna be working with hot glue, um, it is very, very useful for these sorts of uh, engineering projects, but can be a little bit dangerous. So remember, don't touch the hot glue when it comes out. Don't touch the end of the gun. Um, if you're going to be leaving it for a while, please, please turn it off or unplug it. Um, and it's always a very good idea to have access to a sink. Uh, if you do manage to burn your hand, just run it under cool running water for a good five minutes and it should be okay. We are going to start by running some hot glue along the edge of here. And I actually want this to be waterproof, so I'm gonna to have to make sure there is hot glue all the way along that that's going to harden into a nice waterproof seal. Now this is where something like um, silicon sealant would be just as good, if not better, because you don't have to worry about burning yourself with it. But when this glue dries, it should make a very nice waterproof seal. And that will be very, very important, the outside the hull of our ship. And we'll just keep that and hold it there for a little while. So I'm gonna be gluing this bit here at hopefully the same angle. Um, ideally, it would be perfectly the same, but I'm doing this all by hand with a hot glue gun, so I'm aware it's going to be slightly wonky at the best. Okay, so that's going to be roughly the hull of the ship. I would like a nice shape that will fit in here. It's going to be a trapezium shape. And yeah, because it's a little bit wonky, uh, I'm actually gonna have to do a slightly different shape than I planned, but it should be fine. Let me plan that one out. Okay, let's see how this fits. Yeah, that'll do nicely. It's a little bit off center, but that's fine. So we'll get some glue along there. We have the back end of the ship. Turn that off for the moment. And I can start looking at the front end. 
So, I would like it to come together kind of in a point, at least be slightly narrower than it is here, and I would like the bottom to come up a little bit too. Let me do some measurements. Should hopefully be the same as the uh, back end or something's gone very badly wrong. Yes, it is. Beautiful. So that will sit up there and then we can get some other pieces on either side that will bring it into you know, a slight sort of point at the front. Gonna have a couple of triangles. Beautiful. Perfect. Actually, that's that's pretty good, really. So I'll get a little bit of glue along there and there, and that'll seal up quite nicely. And this one. But I think those can get glued in. And then I'm just gonna give it a very, very quick test um, and put some cargo in it just to get an idea of uh, what it can actually carry. All right. Let's do a pre-test and firstly, we can see if this thing floats. Well, that's a good start. So it does seem like it floats. I'm not seeing any leaks through the joins in the hull. It's got quite a bit of buoyancy. I, ooh, ooh, what's that at the back there? So that's something we're gonna have to keep an eye on. I'm gonna have to patch that up a little bit. That's why these tests are so important. I couldn't tell just by looking at it, but by testing it, I can see that leak. So I'll make a note to fix that. But since we're here, we may as well test its cargo capacity as well. So I have this tub of pebbles, and we're going to pour them in and see how many this boat can carry. Okay, that's another problem. Admittedly, that was probably my fault for the way I poured them in, but you can see that the boat is developing a lean to one side. Now, there's a technical term for this. It is listing heavily to the right. It is listing to the starboard. Uh, now, that's a big problem as well. Well, we certainly learnt a lot from that little test. Firstly, we learnt that my boat isn't actually waterproof, which is a problem. However, we did find the leak, so I'll be able to patch that up no problem. It was in this back right hand corner. You can just see a little tiny bit there where it doesn't look like the glue is perfectly in line with the bits of um, foam. That's okay. I'm going to let this dry out a little bit and then I'll uh, tidy that up. But before we get onto that, these are some old planter pots. Um, and I think they would be perfect as cargo containers. I think we can line up a few of them along the middle of our ship, like this, make them, uh, attach them to the bottom there, fill them with our pebble cargo, and that should keep the weight of the cargo right along the center line of the ship and stop it from listing. Now, to keep those in there, I'm actually going to be using these. I knew that would come in handy. Turns out they're the perfect size to be a little base for our containers here. So I'm going to line up a few of those along the bottom of our ship and I'm going to have our containers be placed in there. I am very lucky that I have these lying around, but of course you don't have to use these. You could make, well, these containers out of anything. In fact, your ship may not even need them, but if you do decide to find a way of keeping your cargo on the center line of the ship, you could make your own. Whatever you're making the hull of your ship out of, you could use cardboard or maybe some old cans or bottles or something and line them up along the center of your ship. Or again, just make your own with whatever you have lying around. Now I could slide them all to the back or I could space them all out evenly. I'm actually gonna push them 
slightly closer to the front. Uh, I'm leaving it as a little bit of a surprise for now, but I am going to have something to help the ship move that's going to be sitting on the back end here. So I'm going to have our cargo closer to the front. Those plastic things are really light. These are really light. I'm hoping they won't add to the weight of the ship too much. And I'm hoping that will help keep the cargo a little more stable. You can see these are wobbling around and they will fall over. So I am going to make a sort of uh, sleeve that's going to fit in here, a sort of upper deck here out of some more of my foam board. Perfect. Beautiful. So that should fit snugly in here, which it does. Fantastic. Now, because this piece is going to be the same length as the actual hull, I can measure where these containers sit on this piece and use those same measurements on my one so I can actually figure out exactly where the containers will be. All right, so I have my four rough circles and I'm going to have to try and cut them out so that these can fit through. Beautiful. Perfect. And they all fit nicely in their cradles like that. You know, it's probably a little bit heavy handed on the glue, but it will be fine. Um, if I was perhaps more precise with my measurements, maybe I wouldn't need as much glue to fill in the gaps, but uh, there we have it. The upper deck has been glued in place and now we have our cargo containers able to rest comfortably in these little cradles in the hold of the ship. So I talked about some different ways we could make ships move. We could have rows of oars that are working uh, to paddle the ship along or a paddle wheel. You could do a propeller. I mentioned the, a wind up elastic band propeller. You could make your own propeller out of, you know, plastic or whatever you like and uh, mount it on some sort of axle, I guess, and have that uh, powered by a wound up elastic band. I'm going to do something a little bit different. This ship here is going to be rocket powered. And I'm going to be making a rocket out of everyone's two favorite science ingredients, vinegar and baking soda. Uh, basically, they react and make a gas called carbon dioxide. And when you have that in a confined space, uh, the pressure of that builds up and then uh, the gas has to be forced out somewhere. You can make an explosion if you're not too careful. I want to control the force of that reaction to propel our boat. And I'm going to do that with this. It is a soft drink bottle that I have cut a hole in the bottom and put a tiny plastic tube in. When I put the bicarb and vinegar in here and screw the lid on, the reaction will create carbon dioxide gas and it's only going to have one place to go, which is going to be out this little tube. Now, if I can mount the bottle on our boat, the gas should hopefully push the boat along. That's my plan anyway. We're going to see how it works. Um, there's two things I need to do to make that happen. Firstly, I need to find a way to actually attach the bottle to the boat without it falling off. Um, and I also need to make sure that the vinegar and bicarb reaction is actually going to create enough force to power the boat. I'm going to test this with some bicarb and some vinegar in the bath and we're going to make sure this actually works as an engine. So we're going to start by pouring some bicarb in here. Um, I'm going to use this funnel to make it a little bit easier. Then I'm going to pour the vinegar in, screw the top on really quickly, put it in the bath and see if it goes. So let's pour some of this in. probably enough. This is all a little bit of an experiment, so we're going to see how it goes. 
I'm gonna pour the vinegar in. It should start reacting and making carbon dioxide. All right, it is starting to bubble. That's good, let's get the top on. Hey, look at that. You can see the bubbles coming out of the exhaust at the bottom, powering it along. That seemed to work okay. I can probably get a little bit more vinegar or a little bit more bicarb in there. Oh. Now, it took a long time to pour the powder into the bottle, so I'm not sure I can put the vinegar in first and just pour the baking powder in there. But I've got an idea. What I think we can do is actually use this baking soda to make little pellets. When you mix it with a little bit of water, just get it a little bit damp, you can actually mold it into a kind of pellet shape. I'll need a little bit more water. You can see it's becoming that sort of, yeah, starting to clump together. So if we can add enough water to get it to clump together, it might work really well. Okay, I'm back and I've made myself some bicarb pellets. Uh, hopefully they will both be thin enough to fit through the uh, neck of the bottle, although some of them certainly won't be, but I can at least push them in a bit quicker than just loose powder. Um, and hopefully they won't fall apart when I pick them up, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now it's time to attach my bottle engine onto the boat. Um, I could glue it on directly, but given that it's annoying to refill the bottle all the time by having it on the boat, um, I may want to change the design. I'm actually going to uh, do something a little bit different. Basically, I'm going to have a little loop of this pipe and the pipe will be glued to the boat and then this will just be tied together so I can undo this and remove the bottle if I need to. So that is a nice firm cradle for our little uh, bottle to sit in. Beautiful, just a bit along there. And hopefully I can just have this stuck to the hose and not the actual bottle. And that way it can be removed if needed. But that is looking pretty good. It's just glued to the hose. It's still firmly in place so that uh, all of the force from this reaction should hopefully push the boat along. And once that has dried a little bit or set a little bit, it'll just be uh, up to us to load the ship with the cargo, put the fuel into our engine and actually test it. All right, so this is my completed design of my ship. It is all built and it is ready for testing. So when your ship is completely built and ready for testing, you can join me in the next video and we can try them out and see how they go.